everyone, here at God.TV, we're here to pray <laughs> and have a little fun, I suppose. Oh, so I thank you and praise you, Jesus. I thank and praise you. I thank and praise you. I thank you, Lord, that your love is so much more than we can ever comprehend. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you delight in us that you are so good that your heaven is just the perfect place and everything that you do everything that you do conforms us so that we won't be aliens and strangers when we arrive there so i just thank and praise you lord jesus even though uh, sometimes it seems a little tough or hot that you work all things for our good. And we know the enemy's in the mix here too, but some of it is also the conforming of our, our own carnal flesh. So we just thank you, Jesus, and we just receive all that you have for us, and we just submit ourselves to you this day. <laughs> Romba vakine bara kone bara sondra vla bara to kone bara toro konda bara. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. I pram papa sukine takaran takna. Okay. We do have a praise report. David, who we prayed for last week, has went home to be with the Lord. Remember last week, the Lord told me it was Healing Hearts Day. Well, I just believe that David and his family partook of that message the most. You know, sometimes it's like, um, sometimes there's things inside that need healed and, and relationships with other people and things. And that's the real blessing of a long, drawn-out kind of illness because you have that time for making peace, getting real about things. And David knew the Lord. So what does that say about his witness? To be able to go through this and cling to the Lord and to go in, and enter into his peace. So... You know, getting real about things as you're facing eternity. And death, it only stings for us that are left behind. <laughs> so, you know, but to be left behind knowing that a person is going to, to be in heaven without a shadow of a doubt. Um, I will have to share a testimonial sometime uh, about my friend Brian whom I know without a shadow of a doubt. Um, he, he went from being the worst of sinners to going right straight to the Lord. And it, it's just amazing testimony because when he, when he died, I wasn't there when he died. I was around there close. But um, when he passed, his family said he has had an ecstatic look on his face. And so I was just so elated. And when I think about heaven, I get so excited because I'm, I'm like, ah, he's the first person I want to see. I'm so excited. He's my best friend in, in uh, high school. So, um, it's just a great hope. So, I just let us pray for um, uh, David's family, the ones who bear that sting uh, having to be left behind here so we just thank you and praise you Jesus and we thank you for David and his witness and his life thank you great comforter we thank you Lord Jesus we thank you, Lord Jesus. 
you come to all those that call upon your name, and we call upon your name right now, Lord Jesus, to flood over that entire family and to fill that empty spot where David was with your presence. Remember, Queen Kone Barakori Basibaracho, Bembarala Rikira Brasa. You know, it's really strange. Um, uh, being a believer and those whom you sup with, the, the more and more I go, and it's weird because it's like, um, I'll get a song in my head, and I know it's from one of my friends. So. grip. I know it's the Lord's way of showing me my friend is going through something or I need to pray for them. You know, just the way the Lord is, you know, it's almost like we can read each other's minds. But it's it's that bond through the Holy Spirit where a soul tie, you know, we know a soul tie can be a good thing and it can be a bad thing. And so, you know what, it's a bad thing, you're tied to demonic spirits, and so you know hidden knowledge or things about people or whatever. But when it's a good way, it's the Holy Spirit being that conduit. So, uh, I just overcome with emotion because, I'm, you know, it's part of that tie. And so, uh, I'm just tapping in to my friend who, whose brother this is. So, <laughs> it's weird. But anyhow, uh, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. For you are the great comforter. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, as you open wide your arms and receive David. And you grant us that hope and that joy and that peace. Thank you, Lord, for the eternal picture that one day we will all get a chance to meet David. Praise God. All right. Um, Mr. Truth, uh, wrote me this week, and he said, this past Sunday, many people were healed, uh, at his local church. Um, I prayed over someone and they got healed on the spot, and someone with a broken leg also got healed by Jesus right on the spot, so... Uh, so he's just praising the Lord. Um, he says, I'm so glad God is for us who can be against us. Amen. It's really cool, uh, you know, when you see, when you amidst the manifestations there, that power. So that is really a cool testimony. Um, and I got this... Uh, kind of praise report. Um, this is regarding the um, uh, prayer for gift of tongues and growth. This is actually um, an excerpt from a stick and broadcast I did. And they say, thank you so much. I've been watching this video and a few of your others for only four days. And now I am fluent in tongues as of about 45 minutes ago. Praise Yahweh. So, that's really cool. That encourages me because, uh, you know, I do the videos. I go out in faith and I post them or whatever. But when you do stuff that gets results, <laughs> the enemy hammers you so much. And so I get a lot of 
of grief. So every time, every any time that I get a testimony like that, I'm just so encouraged. I'm like, thank you, God. You know, it's it's like going after the one. It's it's so encouraging to hear, you know, that there's some good coming. So awesome. All right, I think we could probably get into some prayers. Okay, happy farmer. His dad had knee surgery, so we'll deal with that first. Uh, we just ask Lord Jesus for your hand, your touch, to go over Happy Farmer's dad's knee right now in the name of Jesus. We call forth restoration, healing, that there aren't any knots of tissue binding up uh, over the, uh, you know, where scarring would happen. But who we declare it's smooth that everything operates uh, wonderfully even new, even like new restore that knee in Jesus mighty name okay and um, he's also, he's got a mom with rheumatoid rheumatoid arthritis and I happened to tell him um, that kind of like a general thing that I have noticed <laughs> it's just going all over the place isn't it stay <laughs> alright well it's better anyways here we go. I'll scoot for it. Um, with rheumatoid arthritis, from what I've heard regarding deliverance ministries, um, that stuff that deals with the joints and the bones like that, uh, a kind of a consensus is that it could deal with unforgiveness. And so... Um, I asked him, you know, like, like when he prays or whatever, or it's something, you know, you don't want to sit there and, and, uh, put somebody through the, through a potato masher, you know, uh, there's gentler ways that you can kind of feel out, um, it for information, but, uh, to see if maybe that might be a root, because that's what, you know, uh, healing can boom if if uh, whatever is you know whether it's a sin or whatever because we know we have every penny has to be paid for and uh, you know he'll forgive us and heal us and do everything for us we have to you know bring it before him or it could be some access point or whatever so I just asked him to um, maybe consider about that so, um, so it's rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, okay. Oh, and, and besides, um, I think a, f a family, another family member might have it or something and just basically told her, give up and get used to living this way, <laughs> you know? So we'll start right there because we don't receive any curses. And she didn't either. Uh, she called that down right then and there, but we will just agree with her. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that she knows not to receive that evil report. Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, we just invite you into those joints. We expose you arthritis in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak forth inflammation to go down in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak strength to her muscles. 
We dissolve that fluid in between that's causing too much and swelling and such. We speak life, abundant life over her entire body. Rheumatoid arthritis, you have no place in her body. We cut all of your webs of destruction now in the mighty name of Jesus. We cast you to the footstool of Jesus for judgment. You have no place. No place. And we thank you, Lord Jesus. Give her that victory. Give happy farmer the victory, Lord Jesus, as he also lays hands upon her. For that victory of healing. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Well, hello, Diablo. I just gave your little uh, praise report earlier. He's the one that gave the praise report on the prayer for gift of tongues and growth. So awesome. Thanks for... Oh, he, he joined the room and left the room. <laughs> okay. Well, he was here. He might have missed what I said, though. Okay, also, Happy Farmer, his son had two as asthma attacks recently. So, We speak to his lungs in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that uh, no curses can stand. Especially generational ones. In, in the face of this godly man. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for he has authority, even over the other side of the family. Any, anything from the other side of the family. We speak life and health into his son's lungs in Jesus' mighty name. Free flowing. No irritation in Jesus' name. We break off that trigger point of asthma right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We command you go to the footstool of Jesus Christ for judgment. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Counterfeit tongues. How to ask this, but if someone has counterfeit tongues... I was reading that some spirits try to pretend to be holy and have counterfeit tongues. You might be able to discern counterfeit tongues in others. Um, it could possibly be. Like if you have a, the Holy Spirit living within you will stir you up. You'll feel, you know, everything could be right, but you might feel that something's quite not right. Or everything will be right, but there'll be this little bad fruit or something that kind of goes counter. So it could be that. Um, but as for yourself, yourself is the best, you know, minding your own business is the best place to be. Um, because, like Derek Prince says, if you ask for the right thing, you won't get the wrong thing. If, if you're seeking tongues for like, oh, I want this gift, or, you know, some people are like, I do tongues for two hours every day, you know, and they just like, there's, there's exercising it, and then there's like rote prayer, you know, it's like where you're starting to do beads, oh, I got to do, I got to do this, and it becomes a slave thing, but what tongues is supposed to be is a labor of love. It's when you're praying or whatever, um, your heart, your emotions wells up. You're caring for the person, but you're also just getting lost in Jesus. 
in worship and adoration. I mean, if you're worshiping the Lord and and everything, um, you know, He's going to keep you. He's not going to sit there and turn you over, you know. So, um, that's the best I can say about that. Um, you know, other people, I don't know. Um, but uh, you can always know for yourself. So, and that's the most important thing to know, right? Because <laughs> you have to walk out your own salvation every day. So, be concerned with yourself most. Okay. Um, yeah, why don't you come sit here? Could you get Andrew? We'll pray over him. Can you go get Andrew? Dad's busy. Okay. Uh, Andrew has a bit of a cold and he's been coughing. Uh, he missed school on Friday because we, you know, he was just, he didn't sleep well because he was coughing during the night. So we'll bring him in here. Come in here, buddy. Let's pray for you. Aw, <coughs> oh, come here, buddy. <coughs> All right. Join in and pray. Thank you, praise We speak to his lungs. We speak to that irritation. And you're not welcome here. Infirmity, you're not welcome here. We speak life into this body. We speak to these sinuses. We call them to dry up in the mighty name of Jesus. And rest in his, in his head. <laughs> okay. Go go chill out on the Mom. couch. What? If I wasn't if I wasn't feeling bad and if you would and if you weren't having this then I could have made a video because it's rainy. Oh, that's right, it is a rainy day. Yeah, we made a little deal, I said uh, you know, Andrew used to do more videos when he was younger, um, and, uh, you know, now he's big boy in school and everything, you know, he doesn't have so much time, so we were talking about, oh, it should be a rainy day thing, so it's raining today, and so that's what he was saying. I could be doing a video, Mom. <laughs> All right, um... All right, um, I might have to do a little jig jog here, because you want to do this right now, huh? Yeah, okay. Um, my other son, my middle son, uh, Jacob, he had a prophetic dream, and I wanted to have him come on here and share it. Uh, share it with you so I'll let I'll turn it over to him uh, the one about the thing in the sky and the coffee that's the same way yeah okay give me gum thank you well they want to hear you okay here's where the volume stuff is so okay so there was this little bright star that came down and it was like a whitish light light green thing and it said that it was the messiah and it was like at this weird school place and then there was this one teacher's lounge that I ended up getting in and it had this coffee dispenser thing. It's like one of those things with the coffee mug, the big one that you put under. Mm-hmm. Okay. And 
I pressed this thing and there was water in that one jug and um yeah I pressed this lever and then coffee started to come out into the water mm -hmm. so there was a teacher outside the teacher's lounge and I thought oh my gosh I'm gonna be in so much trouble so I went out there and the teacher said oh you're not supposed to be in there and then um when I was out there it was like this brick wall and there was this little green grass area with a brick wall surrounding it and I think it was that time in the dream when someone came up to me and said that wasn't that thing wasn't the real messiah okay cool okay <coughs> where's my gum mmm right there Gotta have that gum back. Okay. And so I was kind of interpreting um, his dream because we know, like, all the signs are going on. And um, the Antichrist is, you know, it's like when, you know, how much longer because it's so close um, that Katy Perry... Um, music video thing that I put up on here um, that wide awake song I would keep hearing that in my head and then when I finally stopped and looked at the lyrics when I looked at the lyrics it's like I got pummeled with scriptures and I was like wow you know when I went through it was like oh my gosh it's like the devil singing this song <laughs> you know and it's like I could just think of all of these scriptures to where that were matching uh, went in tandem with with the lyrics so it's pretty wild um, but uh, somebody wrote me about the the famine dream I had the famine here it comes video on YouTube and in it I mentioned concern that symbolism is pointing that the third seal of famine has been broken you know I just kinda ask you know is that what it means because of you know the symbolism in the dream and here's a comment that somebody left me I can say anything that it appears the fourth seal is broken though it is not an all at once situation slowly it seems that peace has been taken from the earth like the famine slowly creeps in so will peace uh, drains out and it, they said just an observation so um, and that when the opening of the fourth seal is in revelations it says um, and I looked and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death and hell followed with him and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth so Anyhow, interesting. And yes, it maybe it is a more of a long drawn out kind of thing. It's just that when you have so many bowls and and seals open and then they all kind of But that's I don't know, that's just how I I feel what's going on. It's you know, he he comes like a thief in the night and I just feel like that it's going to hit all at once and you know we know with uh, the economy and such that things are going on and uh, it's uh, imagine a you know like a, a big economic collapse or a big um, disaster event what would happen you know, I mean, so much could happen all at once. So, just an observation there. I hope the video is clearing up as well. Because it appears to be running, so, don't know. Um, if it's stopped, let me know. <laughs> it's okay, alright. So, anyhow, um... As I was talking about my my son's uh, 
dream that he had. Um, yeah, you know, it's... And he gave more details when he told me. He said that the star thing, it kind of had green and stuff. It turned into a face uh, at the very end. I don't think he described it as that uh, here. But, uh, yeah. And I was... Uh, saying to him about the uh, coffee thing and the teacher's lounge and whatever I just feel like he's being shown something that kids don't normally get to see you know it's more of an elevated kind of thing and uh, he is uh, anyone that's ever prayed over him has noticed the anointing on him so he's just he's just my that's how he picks up on things so praise God on that um, let me get back onto my list of prayers. If anybody has any prayer requests or anything, you want to uh, email info at hearinggod.tv or um, join in on the chat. Uh, we'll get you in here. So we prayed for Andrew. We want to pray for Mr. Truth's brother, Josh, who is an atheist. And, jo and uh, Mr. Truth is on fire for God. And <laughs> Brother Josh is really starting to notice, like, man, you like pray all the time. And, you know, you know how that razzing thing goes when people don't understand. So, anyhow, uh, we just thank you for Mr. Truth's uh, witness. Thank you for his witness, Lord Jesus. Bless him, Lord Jesus. Bless him and encourage him and strengthen him. Thank you, Jesus, that he can see everything for what it is, Lord Jesus. And that he can love his brother regardless. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We agree with Mr. Truth. For the salvation of his brother Josh in Jesus' mighty name. We pray for his soul, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I wanted to share um, that Mr. Truth said that his mom has had an end times dream recently and so did I here at college he said in it lots of people were rioting and there was fire and all um, I know the Lord is speaking to people out there um, there's another person that shared with me having a very vivid dream of camping out in a shopping mall with others and essentially living there. It's like he could see the cardboard, you know, laying on the cardboard, and he had his own little place. And, uh, you know, that's... <laughs> the Lord's showing us things. Um... Let me look over here, but, I mean, this brings a, this brings about, you know, when we're shown things, are we going into fear? Are we asking the Lord, you know, Lord, um, is this in the future? You know, I trust you. I know Psalm 91, and that I will be saved, even though 10,000 fall here. It could be so much as the Holy Spirit saying, move one step to the right, and you're safe. So that's the kind of mindset that we have to have. Okay. So Isaiah 40 said, um, My daughter was taking a bath the other day, and out of nowhere, she was saying she saw fire. So, yeah, these visions and things. How old is your daughter? It's really cool to hear, you know, it, it doesn't really matter how old we are. <laughs> he shows up. She's five years old. Yeah. 
And then she saw our house on fire, and then it switched to seeing animals on fire. Wow. Yeah. And it's, you know, you have to comfort them. Because, you know, we can't, we can't, um, just play stuff off and syrupy, sugar-coated life. I mean, I tell my kids all the time that ugly stuff is going to happen. We know it's going to happen. It's in the Word. And so at the same time that we feed them, this is truth, but this is what the Lord says. And this is going to happen, but this is what the Lord says. So, you know, you can't do that hellfire damnation stuff <laughs> but um, it's a wonderful thing to be able to train our children up because when other people are flipping out what are they gonna mirror mom and dad saying yeah this is bad happening but this is what the word saying those little ears that little mouth is gonna speak out that truth praise God for little kids and you had a dream of buildings exploding. They were not houses, but either schools or government buildings. Yeah, we, we can't discount, you know, I there there's stuff that's symbolic. And I'm always like, well, is this symbolic or is this real? What, you know, tell me, Lord. Um, but it's interesting how, you know, you get to hear a myriad of people that are starting to come up with similar things. Um, we have to really take note. So, um, let's talk about what is your end time ministry. Um, do you have peace? Do you have peace? And I have a friend that, you know, is is big into the prepping kind of thing but you know it's like it's a balance so I'm like okay well if the Lord's telling you to prep and stuff do you have that peace at the same time are you prepping so much you're you know what's the balance you know uh, running to and fro attaining knowledge that doesn't do a thing for you um, what's what's something that that is worth your time that is never going to go bad isn't going to go stale filling up on the word of god will not return void and what what do we need in these last days if men's hearts will fail because of fear we need the opposite of that we need faith so we need to fill up on his word um, you know, and I really rag on all of this myth stuff and, you know, the secret societies and all that, because it's just, it's just a big hamster wheel, you know, you know, very well. And, you know, other people have shared with me too. They're like, oh my gosh, I spent a whole day hopping from video to video on all of this fear, fear, New World Order, Nephilim, all these different things. And at the end of the day, I'm full of fear. And I've gotten nowhere. <laughs> so that's, that's something that we really have to guard our hearts against, is, is running around this to and fro stuff. Um, you know, the best thing is private prayer with the Lord and say, what do you want, Lord? What do we do today? What What do you want to show me? And then go in the Word and then hang out with Him. Um, I don't really watch so many videos on YouTube anymore. Um, I don't. What's better time spent, you know? So this is awesome time spent. You know, supping and uh, in agreement with the Holy Spirit. This is awesome time spent, so I won't, won't give this up. So, other things. Do you have purpose? 
what are your giftings? You know, it's funny, as we're doing all this farming stuff, um, you know, I, my eldest son, he's, he's just not, you know, like, we're, we're raking an alfalfa field, because we're gleaning, we're gleaning, and we're gleaning extra stuff to be able to store up for the winter. And we have access to a field to glean, so why not? It takes some elbow grease, but it's free. <laughs> so we're out there, and, you know, I'm looking at my son, and he's just not doing stuff as efficiently as me. You know, we're about the same size now. His feet are bigger than mine now. <laughs> okay, I'm coping with teenagerism. But anyhow, um... You know, I sit there and I, I think about times like that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not grumbling because, oh, you know, he's not working or whatever, like I am. I'm looking at where could he best be used? What is his, what is his best qualities and stuff? And so I let him drive the truck around in the field, you know. <laughs> he loves it. Um, I can be efficient with what I'm doing, so I think that's real important with with end time stuff. You know, I was out gleaning, well, collecting um, English walnuts out in the yard, and my little method is I'm I'm scuttling with my feet, and my feet will hit a will hit a nut, and then I'll pick it up. And I was thinking, wow. You know, because the, the Lord was just showing me, you know, how valuable people are when they're in a right place. And I was thinking to myself, even a blind person could be a huge, you know, they could do that, you know. Of course, we want the blind people healed, but it just makes you think of things differently. Um, you know, are you groaning and complaining over the things you got to do or whatever? Are you looking deeper into, you know, uh, the blessing of it all. So, anyhow, I thought I'd share that. <laughs> um, which, along with, you know, physical giftings or whatever, because I was kind of focusing on that, what are your spiritual giftings? Um, uh, Wagner Modified Houts. Gifted to serve ministry on the internet. Has an online spiritual giftings test that I encourage people to take. Because it won't teach you anything you don't already know. It's not like, ooh, some big surprise. You'll find that you're already, that you, that you enjoy those things. That those are your giftings. And it just encourages you, like writing it out on the wall, to begin to then walk out your giftings. So that you can exercise them and really um, blossom in them. Um, and I take it every couple years. And when I first started, the gift of tongues was my strongest gifting. And so, because I knew that, I knew that I could just freely do it. You know, I, I would say so many years ago, you know, I was very mousy and timid. And I remember um, someone prayed over me. And one of the things that fell that night when they prayed was a spirit of timidity. And a new boldness came upon me. And so... It doesn't bug me that I'm speaking in tongues and not, you know, I, I don't I don't worry about what other people are thinking so much. I mean, I've confessed to you guys that um, doing it with people live one-on-one, -on -one, I'm a little more reserved about just because I want them to focus on the agreement of the healing and not get so weirded out by a new thing of tongues that they that they, you know, freak out about it. But, you know, the Lord's working on with me about that because if I'm to, to do it and who cares, then I will. But I need His help. <laughs> but anyhow, our giftings. 
Are you really looking at what he's given you and blossoming where he's planted you? So, you know, it's basically a mindset of I can't do your job and you can't do mine and not one is greater than the other when we're all in complete obedience, right? It's, it's pretty cool when you think about it that way. Um, but along that note, I got this cool quote. It says, he who buries his talent is making a grave mistake. <laughs> True. Okay, and then end time ministry thought of do you love your life, not even unto death. You know, sometimes when I think about, you know, even, even with gathering the nuts and stuff, I think to myself, this is really worthwhile because even if I'm not here to enjoy them, maybe someone else will will be blessed <laughs> to be able to make use of, of them and live and maybe find my Bible and, you know, learn, be saved. So, um, it's kind of neat. Um, the Hiding Place by Corey Ten Boom. Uh, Corey Ten Boom and her sister Betsy were in uh, Nazi concentration camp stuff. And uh, they were put there for hiding Jews. And uh, it's so interesting because Betsy was so close to the Lord and she had all these visions of that the Lord shared with her of what was going to happen after they got out of the concentration camp. And it gave Corey such hope, and she gave such vivid descriptions, and she said, and this is what the house looks like, and this is what it's going to be for, and this is, you know. And then, wouldn't you know, right before, um, you know, Betsy ended up dying in there. And what what a a hard thing for Corey, but you know she was she was doing her end time ministry. That was her end time, but she was doing it. And throughout Corey's life thereafter, Corey would always go back to her sister and the strength that her sister exuded, and the witness that her sister gave her gave her strength to go forth in her ministry. And so, um, The Hiding Place by Corey Ten Boom, awesome book. I encourage it. So, anyhow, those are some thoughts on end time ministry stuff. Um, I'm sure there's many other bunny trails we could go with that. But, um, that's uh, just some things that I had thought about and I wanted to share since, you know, my son had that dream and other people were sharing with me about these, these kind of end time things. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's get back on the prayer track here. Uh, Andy says that Carrie is a new student in their group, and her dad, Andy, has lymphoma. Lord Jesus, we just submit Carrie's father to you. Bramba kiyan ko nepa rantu ki nepa karopo ki bara son te perapaka. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for Carrie's faith. Brumbera tu ki nepa kabra and her reaching out to others. Brumba ki nepa kira bara su ki nepa. Brumbe ki nepa kara ba ki nepa basu ki nepa. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are more powerful than cancer. Brumba su ki nepa kara ba ki bara. We bind up that cancer, that lymphoma, in the mighty name of Jesus. We bind it up, and we place it at your footstool for judgment, Lord Jesus. We send forth your Holy Spirit to carry out what we are speaking. 
Brown bakine paka, what we are agreeing, Lord Jesus. So shekine bakara paka. For greater are you within. Brown bakine paka, then that lymphoma. Brown bakine paka. Brown bakine paka, brown bakine we cast that down in the mighty name of Jesus. We impart life into his body. We speak life into every part. Into all of his glands. We speak strength into his muscles. And healthy blood cells. Breathe your breath of life over him, Jesus. That he may declare the wonder of your name. The majesty of your works. We agree for healing in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, Maurice would like prayer, saying, I've been born again about two months ago. I am seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit to feel and love the Lord Jesus and my brothers and sisters in him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your wonderful baptism. Thank you. Thank you for entrance into the mystical body of Christ. And I would, I would uh, recommend Derek Prince playlist called, I think, Baptism in the Holy Spirit, Spiritual House Cleaning. And I'll have to remind, remember to send an email as well. Because I like that and I like to give it because it goes through and gives all the scriptures give some of the arguments that people have against it because sometimes doubt uh, helps hinder a full-blown manifestation and so uh, anyhow that um, it helps as you're watching it and you're hearing the word and you're getting that encouragement from Derek it builds your faith builds your faith builds your faith when faith builds uh, that's when great things happen. And I can attest, um, I was reading a Smith Wigglesworth book a few years ago called Greater Works, had excerpted passages from his sermons. And I felt the Holy Spirit build, build, build in me so strong, and I was so excited. But I was in bed, my husband was asleep, and my husband had a problem with his shoulder, and I looked over to him, and I decided, I don't care, I'm going to pray for his shoulder. And I laid hands on my husband's shoulder as he was sleeping, and the Holy Spirit flooded me. My gut went on fire, and then my back, burning hot. And I was like, oh my gosh, what just happened here? What just happened? Oh, my back. The next day I realized I was healed. Um, I had the sciatic nerve pinch. I was healed. I'd been suffering with that for probably two years. I'd be walking and it would pinch and I would just, oh, I would just jar and it would hurt. And after that point, I was like, oh my gosh, I think I was healed of my sciatica. And so then, uh, you know, I began to tell my family, I'm like, I got healed. Oh my gosh. And there has been a, maybe two times where it would try to come back, and I feel like that was the enemy, and I began to claim my healing, claim my healing, and it went away again. I haven't had any problems with it. So... The power of, of 
building your faith up, especially in the Word, um, is so awesome, especially when it comes to uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, because it is a simple thing. It is a very simple thing. You just say, I want more, Lord Jesus. I want the baptism of your Holy Spirit. I am your child. I give myself to you so that you may indwell in me. Come, come forth, Holy Spirit, and live in me. And then you share, just let your adoration your praise and your joy flow and then watch out as it may uh, light your tongue on fire <laughs> because uh, tongues has not passed away amen um, thank you Jesus for that so um, yeah boy I'm just testimony here today but isn't that interesting, though, because my husband was asleep, and all I could think of was that the Holy Spirit was wanting agreement over that healing. Because his, I mean, his shoulder's fine today, but I was like, why did I get healed? I wasn't even asking to be healed. I was praying over my husband, and yet I got it. <laughs> I got healed. So... Um, the condition of the heart, I suppose, and that just the reception there. So, cool. So, yes, we agree with you, Maurice. We bless you. We all corporately bless you. We ask the Holy Father to bless you with his presence. And with and shower you with his love. We bless you in all things that you do. We bless your relationship with the Lord Jesus. We thank you for your heart. And we ask for the Holy Spirit to ignite, to turn your life on fire for him. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, back to some other prayers. And we are going to pray for Larry, who has had trouble sleeping because of pain in his side. Um, he has a CAT scan scheduled. Um, there is maybe some wonderings if it's di diverticulitis there we go diverticulitis which is basically like in the colon or in the intestines you get little pockets of stuff so um, if that's what it is let's just pray we speak to that side where that pain is. Holy Spirit, we just ask for your touch. We speak, Lord Jesus, for complete healing over whatever this is. So that even when that CAT scan is done, that it can be a testimonial of praise because nothing is there. We speak life into his body. That everything flow as it should. Thank you, Jesus. We speak health and abundant life into his body in Jesus' mighty name. We bind up any fear. And we replace it with your joy and your peace, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. All right. All right. And this is interesting. 
You know, I often like Friday night, Saturday morning, like the end of the week, right before broadcast time, the Lord will give me stuff, you know, to pray for specifically. And the Lord would like me to pray for anyone suffering from agoraphobia, which is fear of open spaces. This was shown to me as a short little blip in a dream. A person told me this was on my email. And so, whoever is suffering from agoraphobia, the fear of open spaces, this is for you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We break this yoke right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we bind up fear and any associated spirits that would hinder this life, that would try to bind and tether. We cut you away in Jesus' mighty name. We impart life and freedom. We declare joy and peace in open spaces. Just like the sound of music. Picture yourself out in an open space, circling around, praising your master, praising your king, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, who takes all those yokes and those heavy burdens. We declare freedom in Jesus' mighty name. Agoraphobia, we command you to go to the foot soul of Jesus Christ for judgment. You have no place here whatsoever. The Lord doesn't show us something exciting for nothing. He shows it because it's your day for deliverance. Praise God. Cling to that. If that's you out there, Okay. And another person, I got a name. Now, I do recall that Dylan had a friend named Sarah that had a problem with her neck. And so I haven't heard anything back about that. But all I know is the Lord wants me to pray for someone named Sarah. So I'm not sure if this is that Sarah or if it's some other Sarah. But if you're Sarah, we bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. We bless your kneading bowl. What is that? Financial? We bless you, your comings and your goings. Lift up your head. Thank you, Jesus, that you care so much for Sarah. Lift her up, Lord Jesus. We, we bind up despair in the mighty name of Jesus. We command you go to the footstool of Jesus Christ for judgment. And we speak peace and hope. Thank you for hope, Lord Jesus. We impart hope into Sarah. Breathe your life into her. Rejuvenate her spirit. That she may praise you, O Lord and God. All right, making sure I, I've i got my, uh, not missing anything on my one list. Okay, is there any other prayer requests that anybody can think of? And, and I had been wanting to do this where I leave with a video. Um, those of you on YouTube, you know my videos. You don't have to sit here and watch it because the quality will be poorer on here than if you go watch it at, at, on uh, YouTube. But today I'm going to play a video on my Hearing God channel called Potter and the Clay. Um, so I will leave with that. Um, 
but I just want to be sure that anybody that wanted any prayer um, that we don't miss out on anything. Lord Jesus, we just receive your blessing. As we go forth this week, we receive your blessing. We just ask, Lord Jesus, for obedience to your perfect will. Jesus, we just ask for your touch this week. As you send us forth to do your great and mighty works, Lord Jesus, we receive all that you have for us. All that you have for us, Lord. Use us, Lord. Give us our end time ministry. Show us our purpose. Help us, Lord, to walk in all of your fullness, Lord Jesus. We submit ourselves to you, Lord Jesus, and we thank you. Thank you for sending us forth. Okay, well, that's all I got. So I'm going to I'm going to flip and play this vid and I will see you guys next week. So God bless you all and thanks for joining in. Bye.